Go ahead and start my YouTube channel. I know I'm coming late to the game, but I'm here now. It's better, better late than never. So we finna go on here and talk about some good boxing news. Oh my God, man, it's gonna be a hell of a fight. Not really. Come September 14th. I'm going to ask you why. I'm going to let you know why I say that. It's going to be a hell of a fight because I'm talking about the undercard. You know, you got Garcia's, man. That's going to, and Matisse, man, them boys going to go in. That's going to be the, because they got to make a name for themselves. They got to show who's the best. They got to make a name for themselves. That's going to be a hell of a fight. You know what I'm saying? Left hook, Bert. Left hook versus left hook. Right hook versus straight right, you know. The boy looked good against Peterson. I got I must admit. I must admit the boy looked good against Peterson. Man, he knocked Peterson down, out. Good night. Fuck your couch, you know. <laughs> I'm stepping on your shit. Fuck your couch. But you know. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about Mayweather though. That's what I'm really starting my channel about, you know, for, for right now. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about this Mayweather Canelo fight. It's gonna be look, you you getting you getting to hear from me live first. The first person who ever say this. I've been going through a lot of YouTube channels and watching a lot of YouTube predictions about what's gonna happen, who's gonna knock who out, who's gonna be the best, who's gonna be still be undefeated. This is gonna be a boring fight. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Hands up, back away, put your hands up in the air, just turn around. It's not gonna even as a matter of fact, it's almost gonna be like that uh Mayweather and Delahoya fight. That was supposed to be like one of the best fights ever. And it turned out to be dull, boring, and I don't know. You know, but I see this fight being that same as that way. I know you're going to hate me. And I'm going to get a lot of bad comments about it from both sides. You know, you got, I've been going through YouTube channels, looking at things, and you got 50% of people saying Mayweather's going to win. Well, not even 50, 75% of people saying Mayweather's going to win by decision. Then you got the Canelo fans saying that Canelo's gonna knock Mayweather out. Which is true, you know, Canelo, he got some power. You know, he he has a punch of chance. Point blank point, you know, he has a punch of chance. So with that being said, I'm gonna tell you why this is gonna be a boring fight. Canelo, three hits combination, power. Three to four hits combination. Bang, 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 power to get your get your get your opponent hurt. He you know, he, he got that three hits, head and body. He works it all to get your opponent hurt. Floyd Mayweather is a defensive fighter, but he also has offense. And just for the anticipation of it, it's going to be slamming. It's going to be, it's you know, I'm, I'm waiting for September 14th, but I want to see if my prediction is going to be right. I still think it's going to be a boring fight. And I'm telling you the reason why. That's because... Canelo knows he has a punch of chance. He's not going to be able to outbox Mayweather. He's not going to be able to outmove Mayweather. He's not going to be able to out. He's not going to even be able to out physical Mayweather around the ring. He's not going to jump on Mayweather. He's not going to try to muscle Mayweather to the ropes, pound on him, lean on him. Not so much of a great head movement, actually. Mayweather, on the other hand, he knows that that Canelo can knock him out. He knows that. He knows that one hundred percent that Canelo can knock him out. But this that doesn't scare Mayweather. Mayweather has fought many of big punchers, took their best shots, roll with it, keep on going. He knows that. The thing that's going to make this a boring fight, Canelo. 
only chance is going to throw those combinations, power hooks up and downstairs. And when Mayweather blocks almost all of them to all of them, shoot his uppercut or his right straight down the pipe and a check left hook, Canelo going to say, oh, shit. I can't just come in there and think that I was going to do what I'm going to do. So hopefully, I'm going to try to make Mayweather come to me to fight me. And maybe I can hook with Mayweather as he's throwing his combinations. I know Mayweather is faster than me. But hopefully, I can time it to hook with him. Likely chance it hasn't been done yet. But Mayweather knows this once he gets Canelo into that mind frame where he Resting in between rounds, Mayweather's going to just tap into the body. Tap into the body. Tap into the body. Tap into the body. He's going to take all the energy out of Canelo. And that's what's going to make for a door fight. Because Canelo is not going to have the energy to bring it to Mayweather. And Mayweather is not going to have the power to go ahead and finish Canelo off. Now, don't get me wrong. Mayweather does have power. But he's just not going to have the power to finish Canelo. So it's going to go for a lackluster fight from the third round on. The first two rounds, it's going to be anticipation. By the third round, that's it. All she wrote. Good night. Everyone's going to say, uh, damn. Hope you go to the club afterwards. Because it's going to be a boring fight, man. I'm telling you. I mean, so let's break it down. What chances does Canelo have? <sighs> I like combinations. He definitely has the combinations. He he has great combinations. Powerful, strong combinations. Jab, jab, you know, setting it up, going left left to the body. He you know he has combinations. But the thing I just don't like about Canelo, and you're gonna hate me for it, the boy do not fight. The whole entire round. I don't like fighters who don't fight the whole entire round. And don't, don't get me wrong. When I say fight the whole entire round, I mean still in it. You don't have to throw. You can be waiting on your opponent. You can be slipping, dodging, moving side to side, rocking back with it, jabbing them, touching them, doing something. Now nah, your boy step back. And that's all he does. He step back and. Until he ready to get his strength to throw those powerful haymakers again. He doesn't fight the whole entire round. But he's undefeated. Now, a lot of people say he hasn't fought anybody. That might be true. But he's still undefeated. He fought, who he beat whoever they put in front of him. You can't get mad at him. He's just a fighter. He beat whoever they put in front of him. No matter who they are, even though he was supposed to beat them, let's say he don't beat them, then they're going to say, well, you were supposed to beat that person, and you didn't even beat them. He beats whoever he, they put in front of him. No point, no questions asked, that's it. He whoops them up, gone about his business. So I can only respect him that. Right. Congratulations, you're a young champion. You do what you're supposed to do. You you win. You However you win, you, you do it the way you're supposed to do it. And that's great. But it's a whole different level. And I'm going to be honest. I'm not biased. I like Mexican fighters. I like Puerto Rican fighters. Cotto, like Cotto. You know, I like a lot of people. I mean, you know, if you can fight, you can fight. That point blame point. You know, that's one thing you cannot say. Well, this person can't fight, or this person can't do that. You know, fighting is fighting. You can see how well that person fight. You, know, you can tell how well that person fight based on the opponent and how the opponent fights that person. If he goes into, I don't really even want to commit all the way. I just want to kind of get through the fight and get my paycheck because this boy is too good. I don't really want to be knocked out. So, the only thing, though, I felt Canelo didn't beat Austin Trout. And I know it's a catch-22. 
you know, boxing about how who inflicts the most damage, the most powerful punches, landing. But how can you win a round if you take two minutes and 30 seconds off in that round and only fight for another 20 to 30 seconds? How can you win that round? If you take two minutes and 30 seconds off in a round of a three-minute round and you only fight for 30 seconds, how can you win those rounds? When you when your opponent is still touching you, jabbing you, throwing pot, I mean, they wasn't effective. I mean, point blank. They wasn't effective. Those 30 seconds that Canelo fought, Austin Trout, oh, it, they, he clearly won the best of those chains. Clearly. But for the two minutes and 30 seconds that he did not fight, Canelo was, I mean, Trout was still punching him, catching him, touching him. Yeah, he was throwing those weak ass jabs that wasn't doing really that effective. But when he did hit him, he landed him, he kept him off of him. He was keeping he was keeping busy. That's what he was doing. He was keeping busy. Point blank point. That was it. He was just keeping busy. And I'm talking about Austin Trout. He was keeping busy throughout the fight. And I felt just because he kept busy throughout the fight, he won that fight. Now, don't get me wrong. That's not always the case. Just keeping busy throughout the fight. Now, clearly, when Canelo chose to fight, he was winning. He won. If Canelo would have fight the whole round, he would have won that whole round. Don't get me wrong. But... I, th- I felt like Austin Trout won that fight. I mean, even when Austin Trout got knocked down, he got back up and beasted him that whole round. I felt it was a 10-9 round at the end with Canelo winning that round doing a knockdown. And the one thing I don't like about Texas, or just I don't know if this only in Texas, but open scoring. I don't like about open scoring because it makes the fight go dull. Because they said, I mean, Canelo, in the fourth round, he knew he was winning. So he never had to take risks. He never had to take any chance. Making Austin Trout fight even faster or press, you know, push the pace even faster. Trying to get those rounds back. And clearly one judge was not even watching the fucking fight. Because he had Canelo winning that whole damn fight from from the time he walked into the entrance. I, I don't get that last judge. Fucking skull car is fucking ridiculous. But he nevertheless Canelo won. You can't cry over spilled milk. Wipe it up and keep it moving. You know, Austin Trout should have got you get back or you got you had to do a little bit more, I guess. I don't know. But now Canelo is gonna fight Mayweather. That's not an easy test. And Mayweather is going to make you fight that whole round. He's not going to fight the whole round. Oh, no, 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 no. By all means, Mayweather's not going to fight the whole round. But he's going to be right there in your face, moving, making you work, making you move around the ring. He's going to put your conditioning to the test. And then on top of it, he's going to be hitting you into your body, just jabbing. Yeah! Straight to your body. He's going to put, you know, he's going to take, if, you, if you're not in condition, he's going to, it's going to be shown that you're not in condition. He's going to put it. I mean, you know, his record is, speaks for itself. Everyone say Mayweather, oh, he, he pits and chews his opponents, and he hand picks who he wants to fight. He only pit people who he know he can, who he knows he's going to win. But that's not always the case. I mean, you look back to early in his career, he was dominating people. Dominating them. Outboxing them, out moving them, out slagging them. And he does that through the fight. You know, he's just not gonna give you one thing. He's gonna do a lot of things in that ring if you really pay close attention to it. Is he just gonna sit there and give the guy eight rounds of him going toe to toe with him? No. Why would he? But he'll he'll at least give you two or three or four out of a trail round fight. You, you get at least three or four where he go toe-to-toe with you. But, Gene, you're going to get three or four where he's going to box the shit out you. Then you're going to get three or four where he's going to lay on the ropes, let you come in, as I all your energy throwing punches where he catch all of them, and bam, to the body. You notice he always hitting you to your body. 
regardless, when you come in, yeah, it look good when you hit them in the face and knock them down or you make them knees wobble, but it's going to hit you into your body. And I say that because this is very important, that last statement where he lays on the ropes, make you think you're doing something, he's blocking all your shots, but he's still touching you to the body all the time. Bam, bam. That's going to be the key for Canelo. Mayweather's going to touch that boy to the body constantly. And by Mayweather touching him to the body, Mayweather still is going to get his old overhand rights, the powerful shots, the, the eye-catching shots. But the non-eye-catching shots is what's going to do the trick to make this. I'm sorry. The non-catching shots is what's going to do the trick and treat to stop, to make this fight a born fight. Because Canelo's going to feel those body punches. It's not going to hurt him. It's not going to put him down. But it's going to take some breath out of him. <gasps> make him gas a little bit more <gasps> every time. Body shot. <gasps> Body shot every time you walking in. Body shot, body shot, body shot. Every time I throw three or four punches and I'm tired, body shot. George Foreman used to say it all the time. Jab him to the body. Wait for him to throw those big three, four punches. The fighter got to take a break, rest a little bit. Well, while he resting, jab him to the body. Don't exhort all your energy. Just jab him to the body. Make sure he don't get his wind back a little bit. Take a little bit out of him every time, inch by inch by inch. That's why this fight's gonna be a born fight. Because Canelo's gonna realize that. And he's not gonna put the attack on. Mayweather is not gonna press the attack to go ahead and try to knock him out. Because Canelo still has that puncher chance and that strength to try to knock him down and knock him out. So Mayweather's just gonna keep him off of him. Tag him, I think him, I'll box him, jab him to the body, jab him to the body, hook him to the body, hook him to the body again. And Canelo's going to back up off of him. Watch what I say. Canelo's going to be scared to commit because every time he commit, he's going to get jabbed to the body, overhand right, duck to the move, chip, and now I got to go chase Mayweather down. That's going to make me a little bit more tired because when I get close to him, he's going to hit me in my body again. And then he's going to wait, lay on the rope, roll, 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 hit to the body again. It's going to be a boring fight. As a matter of fact, this fight, as I said to, at, at the beginning, it's going to remind me of the De La Hoya fight that Mayweather has fought. It's not going to be a pretty fight. Trust me. It's going to be a hyped up, anticipated fight, but you're not going to get your money worth. If you ever, if you go back and look at the tape without the video, without the commentary on, the HBO commentary on, and just watch the fight, if you notice, De La Hoya was the bigger man. He was the taller man, which Canelo is not. Mayweather and Canelo is almost the same height. So that tall fact there is going out. Canelo might be the bigger man, but since you're the same height, you might be you are also gonna be the slower man because now you're the same height. In Delahoy fight, Delahoy was the bigger man. He was the tallest, he was the stronger man, supposed to be in any way. And he, De La Hoya said, I was going to out-muscle him, move him to the ropes, pound his body, arms, shoulders, whatever he can hit, make it look good for the camera, and just out-physical the little man of Mayweather because Mayweather was too fast for him. He was too, he was too, he was too fast to fight a De La Hoya at that time. Mayweather knew this. Mayweather didn't want to open himself up because De La Hoya was still the bigger, stronger man who can go ahead and connect to him a couple of times and get him out of there. So Mayweather never opened up that whole fight. Not really. If you really look at it, he never did. He outmoved him. He hit him to the body. Then he hit him to the face. Then he hit him right back to the body. If you ever notice, every time De La Hoya, De La Hoya came in and tried to muscle him to the ropes, he was getting hit to the body to make him back up off of him a little bit more. Get hit to the body every time he came in to Mayweather back up off of him a little bit more. Mayweather never committed to him. So he, he, when De La Hoya backed up off of him, Mayweather just moved back to the circle of the ring. De La Hoya backed up to the circle of the ring. And there you go. It was a thinking man game. And the commentators was like, the jab, 
the jab. And De La Hoya still say to the point, the jab. I'm going I'm to tell Canelo to jab. Jab is going to win the fight. Get the fuck out of here. The jab didn't help your ass. And the jab is not going to help Canelo. Let me tell you why. When you jab, you got to watch the old hand right coming back for you. And normally, that's not a powerful punch. Or that's not a punch most boxers or fighters will watch for when you jabbing. Because the other person is not that fast to, to, count, to time your jab and hit you with an overhand right. Maybe what it is, though. If you notice a couple of times De La Hoya started jabbing, he was actually jabbing Mayweather. Mayweather didn't have an answer for him. He was jabbing him in the shoulder. Bow, popping that shoulder. Bow. Then Mayweather got tired of him jabbing him in the shoulder. He threw that jab. Mayweather hit him with that overhand right. He felt the power of Mayweather. People say Mayweather can't hit. But he got to have some pop to his shot to keep these boys off of him. Because these boys just not walking in reckless on Mayweather. So he got to have some pop to his shot to keep these boys off of him. That little Hoya tried to jab. Mayweather overhand right. You notice De La Hoya, if you watch that fight, stopped jabbing at that point. <laughs> he stopped jabbing at that point. He was like, this boy is going to hit me every time I throw that jab. Mayweather was looking for two shots. The left hook from De La Hoya and the jab. And he took both of those weapons away from him. Now, was Mayweather effective towards De La Hoya? No. I felt he could have been more. I felt if he would have opened up, he would have actually stopped De La Hoya. Mayweather was punching De La Hoya in between his little spurts of flurries and rocking his ass. If you ever notice, he made De La Hoya knees buckle like four or five times. De La Hoya held onto the ropes and then grabbed him to keep himself up and start pity patting. You know, you know what the babies be doing when they be on the top of your head, they pity pat. That's what he was doing. That's so that fight was extremely boring. Because he didn't come to him. Canelo is not gonna make the same state Ricky hadn't made or trying to bull rose bulldoze his way into it and just try to manhandle him and push him to the ropes. Check left hook. Good night. Check left hook. Good night. Understand what I'm saying? Bull ropes, you bulldoze to the ropes, check left hook, good night. Slide out the way. Let you fall into the ropes. He's not going to make that mistake. Because he knows he's going to get knocked out. If he makes that mistake. You know? The Castile fight, Mayweather learned from that first fight. Everyone say that Mayweather lost that fight. I personally felt Mayweather won that fight by one round. One round. The 12th and 11th round gave it to Mayweather. Personally. And that was the first fight. But he learned He learned from that first fight. He needed that fight. That wasn't the first person who thought he was just going to manhandle Mayweather, push him to the ropes, keep that pressure on, and just keep on punching, punching, punching. No, that wasn't the first person who did that. Augustus did the same thing. Half of, half of everyone that Mayweather fought but between that point did the same thing. Uh, Castile, not Castile, but uh, Corrales did the same thing. It's not going to work. But Castile did something different. He said, "I'm a, no matter what I'm going to do, I'm going to push you to the ropes, and I'm going to constantly bang on your body, your legs, your hip, just lower body. I'm just going to focus in on lower body. That was something Mayweather never faced before. That's why it was a close fight. In most people's eyes, and people say Castillo won that fight. I say Mayweather won that fight. If you really clearly look at it, he was catching most of those body shots with his arms, so they weren't doing that much damage. They, it looked good to the crowd because the crowd was far back and you really couldn't see it. But it wasn't that great of a performance. But I say that because that's where Mayweather learned how most people was gonna fight him to his body. Roy Jones had the same problem. He was too fast up top. You know, you couldn't hit a moving target up top. Roy Jones knew that most people was going to fight him to his body. And that's where he had to learn how to protect his body, moving it around, twisting it at all different angles so you can't get good shots. Stop bending down where his chin is on his knee 
so you can't hit him to his body as he come up with an over, overhand right and knock the shit out of you <laughs> from nowhere. <laughs> but Mayweather learned from that first fight. If you notice Castell too, most people don't even talk about that fight because it was no contest. Castillo even tried to go back and do the same thing he did in the first fight and got his ass beat the fuck up with those slit overhand rights, uppercuts, body shots, hook to the jaw from his left hand. Catching it, shooting it. Catch and shoot, as I call it. When you catch the punch, you shoot another. Bow. So Canelo is not going to make that mistake either. So I'm trying to figure out how Canelo is going to beat Mayweather. Well, he's not going to... The only good thing I can say that my Canelo might have a good chance of doing with Mayweather is what Sugar Shane mostly did. But this time you got to finish him up. If you notice, Sugar Shane Mosley, when they first started, was punching Mayweather towards his body. I think it was just like a jab to the body or something, something or a hook to the body to make him bring his hands down. Then he shot it over here right and caught, caught him clean. Bow. On the job. Bucket him. Had him hurt. And then if you notice, when he caught Mayweather again, it was with the same shot where he shot a jab or something light down to the body to make him bring his hand down just a little bit. Then he, and Mayweather saw the punch coming as his hands was down, so he was dipping down, bringing his hands up, and make and Sugar Shane still caught him on the top of his head. Bam! Rock. Legs wobbly. He took the shot, came back, beasted uh, Sugar Shane, beat the shit out of him after that point. No more was he going to get caught with a lazy punch to the body and then beasting up top to almost knock him out. But that's the only shot I see Canelo landing on Floyd doing those counter punches, or not even counter punches, but those combination punches that Canelo do. When he throws those three or four or five combination punches, you know Mayweather's going to swing in between the combinations and shoot them in his face. You already know that. So now why not start your combination punches down low so when Mayweather shoot to swing, Canelo can try to connect up top, eat Mayweather punch to land his monster punch of his own. That's the only way I can see Canelo catching Floyd. Floyd has foot movement. Floyd outclass him in everything in boxing and self for power. I don't see it. But tell me your thoughts, guys. This is my first channel. Y'all might say I'm full of shit. So what? Uh, <laughs> just tell me your thoughts. Leave comments. I'd be more than happy to hear. You can say, Jasper, you're a fucking idiot. Knuckles, you, 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 Jay, you, you fucking stupid. Knuckles, you stupid. Whoever you want to call me. You can call me Knuckles. You can call me Jay. You can call me whatever. You can just say you full of shit. You don't know nothing about boxing. Or you can say, or you if you feel I'm if you feel I'm wrong, tell me why I'm wrong. I definitely love to read your comments. Like I say, I'm starting my boxing channel. This is my first one. Hope y'all enjoyed the show. Or just me talking about this first fight. More to come. Or I might do a, a follow up video on just the comments that y'all love, explaining why I feel the way I feel. <laughs>